and then uh, we're gonna push the uh, push the. Ma- I'm gonna put us on mute. What's up, groovy guys and groovy gals? Hey guys, so glad you could join us. Welcome, one and all, to the Retro Show. Peace, love, night train. What? The what? <laughs> uh, the <clears throat> <laughs> guys, the Retro Show is, <laughs> folks. It's a celebration of growing up uh, as Gen X kids. Hang on. What? It's an homage. It is an homage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sitting across from me, the one, the only, Chris Curtis. What's up, guys? How is everybody? Man, that chick is back in the corner. What's up, baby? <laughs> Looking good. Got your red velvet on for the Christmas time show. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the the I, I guess the crowd's in the corner where they. I had imaginary them. friends as a child. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> I had imaginary and had to had to had to tie a pork chop around my neck to get the dog to play with me. Cause that's my the parents ugly. wouldn't even waste a pork chop. That's the so ugly. I got but, I, what was what, bolo dog food? Yeah, bolo. <laughs> Bolo. <laughs> when you hate your dog, fifteen feel cents a can. Oh man, that reminds. <laughs> Bolo dog. I, I guess the equivalent would be Old Roy now. You know? I don't know, man. I don't think. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think anything stoops that low. <laughs> oh, when you just kind of like your dog, Bolo. Yeah, but you know what? The dogs ate it, loved the it, dogs and they it, were yeah. all never it's sick. It's all they had. No allergies. Uh, yeah, you know, no, they just crazy. feed them table scraps and yeah. you know all of that stuff back then. It just made tougher dogs. That's right. Back then. We had, speaking of which, at one time we had two Yorkshire Terriers. <coughs> yes, Bell and uh, uh, Baxter. Baxter. And here, here's the thing about them. I, I, it's what I tell people, uh, even when I still had them. Uh, I would not take a million dollars for either one of those dogs, but I wouldn't give you five cents for another one just like them. Right. Because, man, it's like the amount of money we spent on vet bills. Mm-hmm. It was like, Debbie, how much you love this dog? You know, and... My mom had not one, but three different English bulldogs. And you talk oh, about... Oh, yeah. You talk about expensive. Expensive, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Breathing issues, I'm guessing. With oh those. man, sinus everything. issues all sinus the time. Sinus skin with those. conditions. Yeah. Good God. Just but, you know, I'll, and again, wouldn't take a million dollars for yeah. any of the three. They were all three awesome dogs, man. But man, I don't. And the dog we had, the, the poodle we have now, uh, Bentley, the uh, the uh, podcast general manager, party poodle, the party poodle. <laughs> Uh, he is, first of all, the most chill toy poodle I've ever seen. He is, ever. man. I, as you know, my mom just got a puppy. Yeah. And I went out to uh, move some stuff for her today, and that dog is just, yo, <laughs> yo. <laughs> well, a lot of that's puppy, because Bentley it was is. like that. It you know? is. But, you know, uh, here's the thing about poodles, though, folks. The, they're smart, and they will learn, and they will train you. Yes. And they will train you. Yes, uh, they uh, have a bell on their back door that he goes up and yes. hits, and I told Cindy, my wife, that, and I was like, "So when you really get down to it, who's training who?" Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna make him get up, open this door. I don't, I don't even have to go out. I yeah. just want to. Yeah, yeah. Like my my big Australian Shepherd Gypsy, she'll go to the back door, and then you open it, and she goes. <laughs> and looks out, looks out the backyard like squirrel. Anything going on out here? Squirrel. Oh, we're good, Dad. You can close it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we we have a a a morning routine with Bentley. First of all, he has to get out and he has to go talk to the neighbor dog. Absolutely. Across two privacy gotta, fences. Gotta find out what's going on. And wake and, and wake up everybody around him because they're both. Rah, 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 you know. Have back and you forth. seen that damn squirrel? Yeah. <laughs> That squirrel's coming to the yard, man. Get him. <laughs> but yeah, we got. Um, but but we do have a routine, and we are well trained people. Yeah. On that. Yeah, but I, you know, 
Man, I was telling somebody the other day, dogs, that is unconditional love. It is. It is, it is, it is unconditional unbelievable. Love. Um, I see somebody mistreat a dog. I oh, get fired up dude. in a hurry. Uh, listen, if you buy a dog and you think being a dog owner is putting them on a chain and yep. keeping them outside and never interacting with them, only feeding them when you think, then you don't need to have a dog. No. I said what I said. I'll stand by what I said. I will stand behind him. Yeah. Uh, for boy, sure. you talk about getting fired up. Uh, yeah, me man, too. When I see someone treating a dog like that, I'm like, yeah. It, yeah. it causes me to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. But uh, any yeah, port in a storm, y'all. Any, yeah. Uh, the, uh, but yeah, do, it, it, you, but you mistreat a dog, man. And it, that, that, that's the to same me thing with a, a child. Lot. Yeah, it is. It's exactly the same thing. I mean, I'm, I'm saying you mistreat a child and I'll get pretty fired up. No, oh, yeah. In a heartbeat. In, in, with, with quickness. Yep. Yep. So anyway, but, we uh, could, we could go down that rabbit hole for a long time. Yeah. It, it's podcast to go to a bad place because eventually I'm going to talk about what I'd like to do to those folks. So I'm going to yeah, stop it right now. We'll uh, but folks, we will uh, tell you what the topic of the show today is here at the Retro Show. And it, it's going to be uh, talking just a, a conversation when we uh, get around to it about uh, life before Internet and how it has fundamentally changed everything in the last 20, 25 years. And uh, it's really unbelievable. It is. And but what we how I think we were so fortunate to grow up <clears throat> in the time that we did, because I thought th- I, th- I think it was absolutely a perfect time for us to grow up. But anyway, we'll, we're, we're going to hit all that when we come back, folks. This is the Retro Show. And if you want to find out more about the show, you can always go to RetroShow.net. Now, at RetroShow.net, you also have. Uh, the ability to go on and listen to all of our other previous podcasts, find out uh, all the other services that that serve up our podcast. And also, you can go to our store, which has (laughs) stuff. So, you know... It's got some cool stuff on there. Yeah, you can get yourself a retro show shirt. Uh, they got glasses. The, co- the coffee mug you got you got for me. Yeah, which I really appreciate. Yeah. By the way, it says the retro show on one side, and on the other side it says I may be old, but I got to see all the cool bands. That is a true story. It is a true story. That's a very true story. <clears throat> uh, I've been to concerts, and I I still go see live music. In fact, we went to one not too long ago. It's not the same no. as when it was when we were growing. Oh up. no no no. No, you it's know, totally it's, it, but I, I still enjoy. Music. I still enjoy the music. Yeah, and stuff. As absolutely. a matter of fact, uh, so here, here's what Ryan has uh, decided that we're going <clears> to, <throat> I already have tickets to go see these. One, we're going to go see Sammy Hagar. Where's he coming? Uh, he's coming to Rogers. Really? Uh, to the Amp When? In August. Of next year. Yeah. Okay. And in, I've got time. And in June, <laughs> yes, you've got time. And in June of next year, uh, we're going to go see, uh, uh, Sticks, um, Foreigner, and John Waite. So that'll be uh, a good show. Yeah, that's going to be a good show. I've how never many, seen. How many John times Waite. you seen Sticks now? Well, with Ryan, and thanks to Ryan, I've seen Sticks probably more than any other band. I think this is going to make like number twelve or thirteen. I'll that's have to awesome. Do the county, but yeah. Uh, and listen, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Sticks never fails to put on a good show. I'm sure they. Do. Monty, Monty said that was um, my brother. I'm sorry, my yeah. brother lives over in Georgia, and they've got a little amphitheater at their mm-hmm. in their in their town. And uh, Dennis DeYoung came, yeah, and and played. And he said that he just like halfway through the show, he said we're fixing to play the Grand Illusion from start to finish. And yeah. they did. He said it was awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, it really was good. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dennis has managed to put a band <laughs> together. Now, just for you folks that don't know, Dennis used to be in Sticks. He was a founding member. He's no longer in Sticks and hasn't been in Sticks for twenty years. But Dennis has put together a band that uh, he has gotten two guys, and they even look like JY and Tommy. But he's got two guys that uh, can sing like JY and Tommy. So they're able to do the entire. He's able to do the entire Sticks catalog. That's awesome. So, you know, you got Sticks and then you got Dennis DeYoung, which to me is like you get, you know, if you can go see both of them, you get. You got Beans and Franks. You got Beans and Franks. <laughs> and the is Beans the is bean? on top of the Franks. Is that the Beans or the Franks? <laughs> 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 Guys, we just can't be in a room, uh, you know. 
and 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 behave freely. That that was a funny movie, dude. That really was something about Mary <laughs> is just. I mean, there's so many things wrong with yes. that movie, yeah. but it's you, you still will laugh. And um, you see, what was it like? Fifteen years later. Yeah, and he see he sees him and beats him Frank. Beats yeah, Frank. <laughs> fifteen years later. But uh, <laughs> you know the um, uh, yeah the, the 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 concert scene. Uh, you know, there, if if you're going to see some of these older bands, you better get out and do it. Absolutely. Because okay, another story. We had <clears throat> tickets to go see Aerosmith this last November. They were going to be in Tulsa, and Ryan. Has always wanted to go see Aaron. Ryan's my youngest son, guys, and so he's Ryan's a great also, person to go see a concert. Yeah, he, with. he is my concert buddy. Yep. And so he really, so I got tickets because Black Crows were open, and I've never seen Black Crows. And so uh, we were going to go. And we were set to go see him. And Steven Tyler has seriously, uh, like, damaged his vocal box, his vocal cords, and you know, there's some. Right now, the concert has just been postponed. But, is you know, it done? Uh, but I've told Ryan, well, right now, you know, I, I, I think they're trying some different things and stuff. But I told Ryan, I said, you know, at his age, I don't know that he He's can He's in his 70s, right? He's late 70s, yeah. I think. You know, and so at this point, you know, <coughs> um, that's what I'm saying with these bands right now. If you want to see them, you better go see them. I saw, I've seen Earl Smith twice. I saw him in yeah. 87. Yeah, um, I, and he was, I, I saw him too. They were great. It was great. It's one of and the then best I shows saw I've him ever again. Seen. It was early two thousand. Early two thousands. It was. We, this, it was the one. They had a giant hand. They yeah. had runway all the way out to like twenty. Was that the one row. Cheat Trick opened? No, it was uh, the Cult. Okay, Cult opened for him, and uh, I went with Joe and Renee Thrash, and. Um, <laughs> We had we had bought tickets and we were up in like the upper deck and he he knew some guy that had a bunch of tickets that he had dealings with and the guy said well I'll take your tickets and I'll you can have these and then he calls me on the phone and he goes hey man uh if I can switch our tickets for uh uh floor seats man are, are you okay with that I'm like dude why are you even calling me <laughs> yes the, the, the answer is always yes we were on yeah. the 24th row. And that hand was on the 25th row. So you were there. And like from here to the wall, like 10 feet yeah. from that runway. And they start the show and Steve Tyler walks right down that runway, right to that big hand and is like right there saying, wow. it was awesome. We saw Great him show. in the early 2000s too. And, uh, Verizon? Yeah. And or whatever it was then. Or whatever it was then. It was all <laughs> tele It changes it. Uh, whatever bank or telecommunications company wants to sponsor him at the time. But yeah, it, it was... Fantastic. And you know, at that time, they were probably in their 50s. At and, least, yeah. And they were still just bringing it. Yep. You know, uh, Aerosmith's one of the best live bands. I, I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, so I hope Steven Tyler can recover enough because Ryan really wants to go. I can tell show. you a better live band, a better band live than any band I've ever seen. And you were with me. The, uh, Do the Doobies. Doobie Brothers. Oh, fantastic band. Uh, live, they're incredible. Amazing, amazing <laughs> live. That they was, sound just like the album. It's just it is, like the oh album, man. and it's one of the. It's, it's just a party out. It there. is a party, you know. And it's it was, just a party. It's just such good music, and I mean, everything they played is like, oh, I know that, you know. And everybody's you know, dancing. Everybody's and it, dancing, and having a great, a great time. time. Great time. Great hey guys, the topic of today's show uh, when we come back uh, is concerts we, we've seen. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, that was just all the lead up, you know. You know how we do. You know, you people know how we do. Um, no, we're going to come back and talk about uh, life before internet. For you kids that don't know, we're about to tell you what it was like. Yeah. When we come back right here on The Retro Show. Hey guys, we're back on the retro show, and uh, the topic today, Chris, is what life was like 
before the internet, especially growing oh. up when we did. I thought we were going to stick with concerts. We'd say. Uh, <laughs> well, we've done that before. We, we may do yeah. it again sometime. But yeah. the uh, life before the internet, and the thing is now is we actually have adults now that have never known life without right the internet. Right. People who have had kids who are grown functioning adults who've never known life and they have grandkids without yes without <laughs> the internet yeah. and so uh here's here's point number one that i wanted to make that was great there's no video evidence of anything we did nope as kids nope zero. not any zero and today first of all i can't imagine the pressure of you know all of the social media stuff on these kids out there, oh, man. You know, and it's ca- it it has caused some problems. It has um, two things. I think um, f- for me, and my this is strictly my opinion. I think it's a lack of communication between a parent and their child. Well, I don't. I, I they've you know, forgotten how to communicate. They they and and kids are mean. Kids were mean before the internet. They were mean they, before the internet. They just too. did it to your face. Well, so. he, he, here's the thing, and and this, I think, doubles it, or triples it, or just exponentially. Bullying, as you know, when when you would go to school, at least you could come home and get away from that. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, with social media now, bullying can go on all the time constantly constantly that's what i'm saying talk to your kids man. talk to your kids because they may not be okay <laughs> nope and uh you know uh you know i i i don't like bullies i i have a very I mean, small opinion of bullies out there and so when you know you have a time right now where these kids they they can't get away from it Mm-mm. you know and it's just 24 7 well so. i mean you you to reiterate, they can get away from it, but everything is centered around the internet. I mean, you look up your schoolwork, you you do this, you do that. Um, you could put it down, but then you can't function because you have your your homework is tied to right. It. Everything is tied. Every, to the internet. I mean, literally, we yeah. had when when COVID hit, we had uh, homeschooling. Basically, I mean, kids were online. Yeah, you know, uh, doing school online. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it was, uh, but you know, the, but when we were kids, you know, we didn't have, <laughs> nobody knew where we were at. Here, here's so, the, here's the big takeaway kids. I want you to know something. Our, our telephone was attached to the wall. You didn't text with it. You talked on it. Yep. Okay. And you did talk on it when you wanted to talk to your friends. That's what you used when you couldn't get out of the house or, or your was, significant other or your, or your girlfriend or boyfriend. Right. And so, uh, or you would get on your bike and go to their house. You know, that was social. Our neighborhood was social media. Yeah. And it was, and, you know, a getting good time. Up, it was a good time. And so, uh, that, <laughs> that's was, one of the big differences is, but the big takeaway kids is nobody knew where you were. Nope. I know your mama tracks you on the cell phone now. She does. She has that little live 360 and she tracks wherever you My are. My daughter tracks me on her yeah. cell phone. Yeah. So. And you li- listen, th- there's good and bad about that. I want to be able to know. It's like <clears throat> when I tell people, when I go out on hikes, okay, I may go out on a 10 mile hike. Um, <laughs> I may. Uh, but I may go out on a 10 mile hike and He's I. He's lost it. I. T- <laughs> <laughs> no, I do that. I actually love doing that. But, it, you know, it's great to get out there, clear your heads. And I stay, like, on trails. I, I don't go out just walking through the woods. You don't go willy vanilla. I don't go willy vanilla. I got you. Somewhere. I just – but, you know, I have that phone. And, it you know, the, spells, you know, the cell service is a little spotty where I'm at. But still, what I tell people is that I keep that thing on because if I fall down – and get hurt. I want to be found. Uh, for all you young you know. people out there, you know, when you fall down now, it's a celebration that you fell down and people are laughing. But you fall down at our age and it's like, oh, oh no. crap, that Are hurt. you okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, Reason I laughed while ago, we were talking about the homeschooling. I saw a video. <laughs> it's, it's a preschooler 
<laughs> not a preschooler, but an elementary school kid. And he's on he's on his, his Zoom, whatever, for school. And the teacher's talking. And all of a sudden, here comes his mom. <laughs> she ain't got a stitch clothes on. Oh, and the no. teacher's like, oh, my Lord. I've wait, heard wait, stories wait, about that. No like, dad's on. walking by in his underwear. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, he's, he's got his boxers or his tidy whities on. He comes through the shot. She didn't have a uh, stitch on, Jack. She didn't have a stitch on. She was on. getting dressed, and she just. Oh, no. <laughs> You know that. That's what I was giggling about while ago. I'm okay, sorry, so that I, popped into my I, head. I'll tell you because you talked about uh, one thing about when COVID and Bentley saved me on this, and I'm about to tell the story now. But the guy that I said this to no longer works where I work, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you what happened. <laughs> this true story. So COVID hits. You know, we're meeting on Microsoft Teams. Right. Some people use Zoom. We used Microsoft Teams. So we're having a meeting, and. I learned early on that I don't have a poker face. <laughs> he does. So I, you know, I react to things that are said. If I don't like it, you can tell, you can look at my face and tell when I, when I'm not happy. And so, <laughs> so I also had the mic open. And so, uh, one, someone said something that was just, I'm just going to go ahead and just throw it out there. It was monumentally stupid. And uh, my response was, and it was out of my mouth without remembering that I had not muted the microphone, was, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> uh, Butch, I'm sorry. Did you have something you wanted to add to that? No. My lo- dog is over here barking to get out again. <laughs> I mean, I totally used Bentley, threw him under the bus. And, you know, just he's like, I do. myself out of there. I didn't know like, I wanted to he's like, And he's looking at me like, oh, you know. And, but, no, true story on that. But, no, the uh, – uh, but, no, that's that's the other thing is uh, – and I call it uh, tough behind the keyboard. Oh, yeah. Is that people say things – people will say things that you don't – guy – you're saying things to people, and when you type things out that are insulting or confrontational or stuff that you wouldn't say to their face, that's my rule. If if I wouldn't say it to your face, I don't put it out there. Right. Me neither. And there's a lot of people that don't realize that, and that has repercussions. It used to. Uh, it, you, Before not, the internet, it damn sure it uh, it doggone dead gum <laughs> sure did have a repercussion before the internet. But, you know, the, uh, but no, that's the thing now, man. You know, people will say things, and that's one thing that's changed too. I, you know, it's like, you know, that, that doesn't happen in a vacuum. If you do that online, that's in real life. Right. I agree. You know? 100%. And so, no, that, that's, that's. So here, here's another, another thing before the internet. Um, I keep blocking myself. Um, just like we did in the show before, I was looking up on my phone when vacation came out, when Christmas vacation oh, yeah. came out. Seems like old times came out. That was just movies. Um, there's all this information at your fingertips now that yes. you can just pull up. Um, for all you conspiracy theorists out there, some of it may be true, some of it may not. I don't know. But for the most part, stuff like that, you can just look it up. Yeah, you can find back it. then we had to depend on Encyclopedia Britannica. Encyclopedia, or let me introduce you to the Google of the eighties, the Dewey Decimal the Dewey, System. That's right. If you remember the Dewey Decimal System, there was system. a reason they had library classes so you could figure yes. out how to do research. Yeah, and you had to go in and look through the card catalog and hope to God somebody didn't have the damn book you needed. Listen, I. I I remember, thank goodness that the UCA library was open to high school kids yes. because, man, I can't tell you how many times that I would go there on a Saturday yep. and, you know, try to be researching for a report and stuff like that because they honestly had a really good library. They did. They still do have a really good library. And, you know, they opened it up for us to be able to come in there, uh, even though we weren't students right. of UCA. We're still high school kids. But, yeah, uh, how many times? But that was our Google. It was, was the library. Cards, the Dewey Decimal the, System. The card catalog. The card catalog. Thank you That's very right. much. Yep. The card catalog. Yep. I and, spent a lot of time in the library. And at home, it was... Library, library. I can't library. Even, yeah, I always say library. It's library. That's <laughs> because you're from Arkansas, <laughs> sir. Right. It's library. library. And we're going to wash clothes. Wash. And, uh, wash, <laughs> and it's a library. And we're, we're going to go get a Coke. What kind? 
orange. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I t- man, you know, I, I, I do orientation at work and I always tell people that um, it, it was it was in um, reference to one of a piece of equipment we have that's got a generalized name. And I'd say, listen, for all you people that are not from the South, you come to the South, you're walking down the road and you're like, hey, man, you want a Coke? They're like, no, I'm good. I'm going to get a Coke. You go in a store and you come out and they're like, thought you were getting a Coke. Well, I did. Well, that that's a Mountain Dew. Yeah. Everything's a Coke. Everything's a Coke. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. I saw this this breakdown that, that there's basically, the, the in the South, every it's just everything's a Coke. Right. You know, what kind? Dr. Pepper. You know, yep. uh, in the Midwest, it's soda, and then you get to pop. And actually, parts of Northwest Arkansas have started taking on soda. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I know. I, I can't. I it's mean, a Coke. It's Coke. Yeah, it's Coke. Uh, hey, guys, from the world of Facebook, let me go ahead and just uh, uh, say hi for all the people who have uh, decided to. Uh, Mike Racher says, what's up, dudes? What's up, brother? What's up, Mike Racher? And then uh, cool Tracy, Tracy Gilkey <laughs> says, sticks came to my junior high school in Russellville. They were awesome. What? I know. Uh, and then, um, <laughs> okay, so also my, my, my cousin Tracy puts on, it, back in the day, you know, we're talking about pre-internet. They had part. Do you remember party lines on phones? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. My grandma had one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My grandma did too down in down in Oklahoma. Yeah. But apparently, Tracy had a party line with an elderly neighbor that would tell my mom and dad if she heard us cuss. <laughs> she would listen on the phone. I guess she would listen on the phone while she was having a conversation. So it was my mom's mom, Mama. She lived in yeah. Southeast Arkansas, and she lived on a farm. I mean, like row crop farm. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were on the party line. And you just didn't tie up the phone. No, you didn't tie up the phone. You got on there, you said what you needed to say, and you got off. And they, <laughs> yeah. you, know you know, you'd be talking, trying to catch up with her. And, well, son, I'll talk to you later. Love you. And click. <laughs> I'm out. She was done. Yep. Done talking to you. Yep. Uh, but no, no, back in the day, man, uh, that, that's another thing, too. Um, in the days before the internet and before the the, the advent of the uh, what I call the smartphone, which was the iPhone in two thousand seven, you talked on a phone, right? You talked on it. Now it's mostly you know, and and I find my you know I I used to never think I would be a guy that would text. Man, I text all the time now. Well, I mean, it's just easy. It's just if easy it's to not, do. but. If it's a conversation, I don't want to text. No, I actually want to talk. I mean, to honestly, you. I mean, if it's something that's that because stuff can be mis- misconstrued mm-hmm. through a text message. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. You know, and so I, I'll I'll just pick up the phone and call somebody, especially when I'm driving. I'm, I'm you know it comes through my truck. Good yeah. lord, technology is crazy. It's but, it's nuts now because, you know? and here's another thing, pre-internet, uh, we had either a cases and cases of cassettes mm-hmm. or cds mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay right for our car thing first of all it started off eight tracks for me then cassettes yep. then the cds but still it was a physical media that you had in there you can't even get a vehicle with a cd player now forget yep. and never mind cassette i have a 2016 like and i have a cd player in yeah my truck. you do in okay but before that mm-mm yeah. I don't. That, my other truck. I had another 2016 before this one that that did not have a CD player. Really? I had an SD card, which I can't. I wish I could find. Uh, those Dodges. The Dodges the Dod- all yep. had the SD because my yep. my Charger had an SD card. That's pretty cool, folks. I had a midlife crisis car. It was a Dodge Charger. It was 2015. I had it for a few years. <laughs> the funny, uh, funny, funny side note to that story. He was with me when he made the deal on that car, and we were going to rush. We were going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly true. And the reason why I did that is because my air conditioner gave out in my old truck. And I had like 175,000 miles on this truck. Yep. And I, I had no plans to get it because it ran great and it was paid for, which is huge. Even beautiful. And uh, the air conditioning system went out. And when I heard the estimate of what it was going to cost to replace that, Debbie said, you need to go get another vehicle. And so when your wife tells you to go buy another car, you just do it. You go do it. You just do it. But I remember the conversation. He's like, I'm getting a, a Dodge Charger. And I went, ooh, Hemi? And he's like, no, I'm not getting a Hemi. What the hell? Come on, but you're getting a Charger. You don't you get the Hemi. Okay, so let me tell you this. Rabbit, rabbit, chasing a rabbit. Uh, the, the the story of that is, when, first of all, the price point was great on that uh, V6. Uh, right. And I drove the Hemi. 
and I had the young man who was a salesperson. First of all, I, I had a friend at the dealership who was actually the finance manager, and he would always give the the newbie sales guy to me so he could get started making a sale because I actually kind of you know deal, dealt with the sales manager. Right. So he gave me this kid, and this kid's like 19 years old. He's young. And we get into this Hemi, and he doesn't have a seatbelt on. And I looked at her, I said, son, I think I'd buckle up because <laughs> we're about to test drive this car. And so, yeah, the Hemi was great, man, but I knew right away I would get in trouble with oh, the yeah. vehicle. So I've got an interesting rabbit hole on that kind of deal. Yeah. You remember right over there by um, – I guess it's box 10 now. It was price, price cutter, price cutter, whatever grocery store. Price chopper. Yeah. But there was a a car lot across the street and there may still be one there now, right by, right behind Arby's. Cindy was looking for a vehicle and you don't buy new vehicles. You buy used vehicles and you drive every vehicle known to man before you make a purchase. And, and this is Cindy shopping. Oh yeah. 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 So we pull in there because there was something she wanted to, check out i don't know what it was but as we pull in cannon's five five years old he loved mustangs i mean every time he'd see a mustang daddy it's a mustang look he loved mustangs and so we're, we're pulling in and he's like daddy look there's a mustang I'm like, yeah son it's a mustang i know what happened we pull in we park <laughs> and i turn around and dude's got the hood up and he's looking at it and i look on the back and it says shelby and went, ooh, ooh, Cannon, that's the top of the line Mustang. Yeah, well, let's go look at this. It's all black. Well, the salesman that was working with us was like, yeah, that's the owner's car. It's like, oh, he just loves Mustangs. He goes, man, he'll take y'all for a ride if you want to go. And I said, well, hell yeah, we want to go. Absolutely. So he goes in and gets him. Comes back out. Cannon gets his, can you want to ride a Mustang? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we put Cannon in the back seat. I buckle him in. We get in. <laughs> and this guy goes, Hey man, um, how do you want me to drive with him in there? I said, drive it like you stole it, man. He 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 loves it. And that was the wrong thing to say. <laughs> what is that? Seventh Street that ran down behind yeah. beside the old airport? Yes. He comes out of that parking lot laying rubber. Hit second, laying rubber. We're thrown sideways. We're fishtailing down the street. I mean, in a in a power slide. Hits third, squeals tires. Then, and we're doing like a hundred and thirty down the street. And I'm going, <laughs> drive it like you own it. Drive it like you own it. Drive it like you own it. <laughs> turns, drive it like you pay insurance. <laughs> turns around and does it again, coming back. And we That's pull in the great. parking lot, and I'm kind of. I, I love it, but I'm kind of freaking out because my yeah. kid's in the car, and I turn around, and Cannon is grinning from ear to ear. He's had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great story, I never story, forget man. that. Yep, pretty cool. Oh, man. Um, but, yeah, I had the, uh, had the Charger for a while. But cars, if you look at pre – but, anyway, I, I think before we chased all these rabbits, I was talking about you had CDs and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, it was. Sorry. Now – I use either Android Auto or I just Bluetooth right in, and I have a Spotify yep. where I can play like any song that I've ever had. That's and, on and Spotify. If, and if they <laughs> don't have it, I have all of my library ripped. I still buy CDs, not ripped. Right. Yep. Uh, then I've got that that I can play through there because I've got a small card that's about that big in my phone that literally holds my entire music collection now. That's awesome. I got a hundred and or a two hundred and fifty six gig small SD drive that I can put in my phone, and I've got everything. I can play it. You are the you know. Jimmy Fidoli of <laughs> Jimmy Fidoli. <laughs> Jimmy's a friend of mine on Facebook now. Man. Is he I, really? I Tell him seen, I said hello. On I Facebook. haven't seen Jimmy in forever. I think I saw him at you know like the group this cat school. when he was in college. He man, was cool, man. He, he was a DJ and he had an extensive album collection. It's you could like tell him to any, play anything. Any forty five in the world, he would like and he would find it and he'd play it for you. It was incredible. Yeah, he had a great music collection. What else? Did you have your own phone line? Did you did you ever get your own phone yes, line? Yes, I, I did. Because, we, I don't remember that number, but I remember your parents' I, number. I remember my parents. Dude, three two I'm, seven two seven, seven eight, eight three. three. Yep. And but I don't remember my phone number from back then. And, three two seven zero oh, two six five was mine and Monty's. I don't because Dad was my, like, "Oh hell no, y'all ain't tying up my phone on." <laughs> well, that was the reason. And actually, I inherited my sister's phone. 
Yeah. Because, you know, my sister Sandy was seven years older than me. So when right. she was out of the house, they just kept the line and said, here you go, because you're starting to tie up the phone line, too. Because right. when she left, I was in my early teens. And so, you know, it, it you know, it kind of just transitioned back to me and I was tying up phone lines too much. And that was the thing too back then, man. If you wanted to, you know, you had to talk on the phone and you would you would talk to your, you know, friends or significant other for, you know, hours at a time. Right. You know. Just you just that's how you I mean I've watched my son do it when he was in high school, um online. Yeah. Um on the PlayStation playing some game with the headset on, talking to his buddies. Yeah. And you know uh, they they never had to go anywhere. No, they, <laughs> they never had to leave the house no. to interact with anybody. No. And we could a little bit on the phone, but man, to get that interaction, right? You know, here's the thing, and this is what I remember from growing up. And and I'm sure everybody out there has a a different uh, thing that they did. But Friday nights during football season, football you were game. at the football game. Yep. If it wasn't football season. We were at the movie theater yep. on Friday nights, and it was and again on Saturday night, and sometimes again <laughs> on Saturday night, depending on what was playing. But Friday night for sure. Yep. You know uh, that was just what we did, and uh, couldn't wait to drive. And then when we drove, we did what <laughs> it's called. Cru- we called it cruising. It means something totally different now, yep. kids. But that's what <laughs> everybody was, piled up on a parking lot somewhere, and yeah. that's where you ran into everybody. And you drove your cars up and down the street. Yep, that and was a great snag. As a good snag, almost knocked the cup over. It's not a Weevils. There was something. Oh, here, here's what I've noticed with my with my son or my daughter. They have friends with them in the vehicle, and then are texting at, in at, the vehicle. They're at a. They're, but they're up. They're all like this. They're yes. on their phone. And they're not even talking to each other. They're just looking at different stuff on the phone the I whole know. time. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? What man? are you doing? Yep. Yeah. Interact. And so. That's the thing is, you know, it, it, I think something has been lied. I, I don't know that younger folks know how to communicate as well as we do. I don't think they do. Uh, that both of my kids will say, and, and I'm, anybody out there that knows me, I'm a social guy. I don't mind talking to anybody. Yeah. And um, my kids are like, you just talk to everybody. I'm like, well, <laughs> you going to find out anything? And, you know, it's entertainment to talk to somebody. Yeah. You know, for me, I, I enjoy getting to know people like me and you. Dude, I couldn't see you for five years and show up and it would be like nothing. I know. Like, <laughs> like it was yesterday. Yes. You know, so. And dude, that happened when you were raising your kids. What's that? I don't know if we ever went five years, but there were times. Oh, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, well, you did the same. Because you were raising your kids. Right. You know, and, you know, and I knew that. And Debbie, well, De- Debbie actually asked me about 10 years ago, have you seen Chris in a while? Nope. Well, why? Because he's raising kids, and that's exactly what I told her. Because well, well, for, uh, you know. from from Cannon, from the age of seven, five, six, seven, he started playing baseball, and then at nine hit the travel teams, and we were gone. Yeah, every weekend we were gone, and then Cayenne comes along. <laughs> She's playing softball and yeah. then travel softball, and we're gone. There were there were weekends when they were both playing that I would go with her on Saturdays because softball people are crazy and if you're a softball mom you know what i'm saying is true um they run a tournament from from eight o'clock in the morning until it's over and so there were times that that i would finish with cayenne and we'd walk in the door at 4 a.m and then cannon had a nine or eight or nine o'clock game the next day and i'm i'm one of the coaches on that team which i mean i was just basically the dugout dad i'd tried to keep everybody going and, you know, whatever. Um, but I was there all yeah. day Sunday. Oh, yeah. You know, so it was, it was me and Cindy looked at each other like, well, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> be fun. Oh, man. But, yeah, I, I know uh, also in the days before the internet, you know, besides music and stuff that which we consumed on there, but, you know, one thing is that the smartphones, and, and really the smartphone changed more, I think, as much as the Internet did. But you Absolutely. had to have the Internet before you could get Absolutely. the smartphone. So it was kind of a, 
yin yang because if you look at early days of the internet, nobody uses the internet like they did twenty five years ago. No, everything everybody does it basically. We were from on a smartphone. we were on bulletin boards, bulletin boards. Oh, listen, man, I got into so many arguments about football. Yep. It was all sports stuff for me, man. I was always yep. into like these Razorback message boards going, you're out of your mind. You well, know? I'm talking about just before before smartphones, before really the internet, it was local bulletin boards. Yeah. They, they would do online gaming, which they were word games, but you'd go in there and you could play with a bunch of people, play different word yeah. games, or you could just socially interact with people over the internet. Right. Um, that's all gone away. Yeah. I remember, I remember when that happened, somebody said, where's so-and-so? Well, he's found the internet. Yeah. And you know, I was like, what's the internet? You know, yeah, what what's the internet? And how do you get there? Okay. So <laughs> here's, here's my, you know, I, just to tell you guys, I, I made a career out of the internet relatively early. early. My, my first job was, they used to call it a webmaster. There's no such thing anymore uh, of that job description. It was basically a guy that built and maintained websites, which, at the time, was kind of simple and naive that you could, because my first one was for a, a a local newspaper. I got hired to be their first web guy, and I also got hired about a year and a half later to be the first web guy at uh, a television station in Little Rock because they had not yet built their website. So I have I, I have literally built from the ground up two of the major media players in our local markets' websites, um, but. My training on that is nobody was trained on that. <clears throat> and it just happened to come along at the right time where I had been kind of looking at websites, it, by, like lifting up and looking under the hood to see what made them work. Right. And went, I can do that. So I started building some just as a hobby. And so within a year of getting a computer, within one year of getting a computer in 96, in 97, I had a job full time. I remember, I remember all of that going down. And so, I mean, that that's kind of how it took off for me. I mean, my introduction to the Internet was I had a friend that said, hey, man, come check this out. And he had bought a computer, and he showed me. And, I, you, know, I had, you know, I'd played with computers like Commodore 64 and stuff like that when we were, you know, high school and college. But <laughs> that consisted of video games. It, 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 it was basically a glorified video game right. system. But this is like he showed me this like you mean I can plug it, I can search for anything and find out information on it. And that intrigued me. And I remember uh, I went and, and, and financed and paid way too much interest on right. a, uh, a Packard Bell computer. I ended up calling and getting the cheapest internet that I could, uh, which was a local provider. Which it was got, a dial-up, too. It was a dial-up. Yep. And so you would tie your phone line up. Yep. And so, you know... Um, you know, I know someday I'm going to be in a nursing home <laughs> and the nurse is going to be taking me somewhere. I was going back when we used to get on the Internet, it sounded like robots screaming. Yep. He needs his medication again, <laughs> you know, but that it did. And so, you know, but yeah, it's going to be when I'm there, Jack, they're going to be calling my daughter going, can you talk to your dad about turning his music down? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, he's he's playing something called uh, the, the Grateful Dead really loud. Um <laughs> But yeah, that, uh, uh, but you know, back in the day, uh, you know, of, of internet, it is the, the, the smartphones changed everything. They did. It changed everything. I uh, remember this thing right here literally has, cause back in the day, uh, there's a radio shack ad that they put on from the nineties. It had a VCR, it had a camera, it had a, 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 a cassette player. And all of this stuff to play music, to record video, uh, a, a landline to talk to people. And it's all right here. And, and, television. and more powerful. And, and more powerful. Yep. So, you know, that, that you know, uh, it, it, it was a society changer, for better or for worse. You know, uh, and, and I, can, I can I can live see without pros it. and cons. I could live without it. Ah, man, wouldn't that Easily. be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? I always <laughs> say when I retire and they don't have to get a hold of me anymore. You can unplug. That I can unplug then. Right. You know, uh, you know I, I fought uh, Facebook forever. I was like, I don't, I, I just, no, I don't, I don't want to, no. And my brother and my cousin yeah. kept saying, you've got to get on here so we can, you know, and, and it, it's, Facebook has become a way of life for a lot of people. Um, just day to day stuff. It's not not getting on there to. It's 
your scheduling is done through Facebook. You know what I'm saying? You set up events. Yeah. Uh, Listen, I'll be the first to admit my my family Christmas party for my sisters and everything. I I schedule it through Facebook because they're all on there and I know I can get them that way. Right. Uh, Any events. That's what I'm talking about. uh, You know, Well, when the kids were playing ball. Yeah. It was all through Facebook. You had a Facebook group, right? right? So, so it's kind of a necessary evil. I was going to say a while ago, I remember sitting in your office at the TV station and you go, check this out. And that was the first time I ever saw YouTube. Yeah. And I was just like, man, that's, that's cool. And, yeah. and, and we kept playing different funny videos yeah. rolling in your office, laughing at these videos. And I'm like, dude, I've got to, I've got to get this. I've on. got to get that. I've got yeah. to get this. And now I sit in my living room and watch YouTube on my TV. And see, it drives my wife crazy, but that's we pretty watch much YouTube. Debbie and I will uh, pull up things. Listen, it's pretty much the only thing I watch. I am a <laughs> so here's me. You know, I'm I'm pretty much a fly by the seat of your pants kind of guy on a lot of things uh, because of my. We're not going to talk about the uh, issues anyway. Yeah, go ahead, but yeah, <laughs> I have some ADD, and sometimes I just go off. But but the one thing that I will focus in on, and that I will, is vacation planning. Is what? Vacation planning. MacArthur did not plan D-Day the way I planned a vacation. So the internet has let me do I think, the... I think that was Ike, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> but still, but no, I'm talking about the internet. But beforehand, when you would plan a vacation, you might have to go to a travel agent or you might right, have to right. pick up, get brochures and read through a lot of brochures. I can plan a vacation, you know, down to the nth detail, just online. <laughs> I've seen you sit on the phone arguing with a hotel too. <laughs> <laughs> not, what do you mean we don't have any rooms? <laughs> that was not one of my best moments, folks. Um, that was going you know, to rush. You know Chevy Chase losing it on Christmas. He didn't have nothing on. Was me that ever. was that rush or was that Iron Maiden? That was Iron Maiden. It was Iron because Maiden. Ryan was with. That's us. right. Yep. And okay, so here's the deal. I'd, I'd gone online. I'm not going to name the company because I don't want to get sued. But what happened was, is I had... What had happened was... I booked two rooms, and they only had one reserved. And I lost it. And they said, well, we don't have any more rooms available. I said, well, you better make some rooms available. And so, yeah, I I pretty much uh, lost it. That was kind of cool going there, man. And seeing there were people from all over the globe that came to Tulsa to watch Iron Maiden. And it was people that were huge Iron Maiden fans that like flew to the States yes. from Sweden. From yeah, just I mean, to come see Iron Maiden see in Iron Tulsa, Iron. Oklahoma. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, but yeah, that, uh, you know, but that's another thing is that the internet has facilitated travel. It's probably shut down a lot of travel agencies. I would say so. You know, because they're just not. Unless they, anymore. unless they jumped on board. Yeah. Unless they jumped on board and, and, went web based right on that. Uh, but no, I mean, I like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a control freak on that front where I like to plan my own vacation. Do you have stuff. a cookbook in your house still? Uh, do you use a cookbook yes, in your house still? I actually still use cookbooks. Do you? Because but, we have a but, bunch of old recipes. Well, I do too. From old but, church cook. And listen, you'll never find any better recipes than from old church cook. That's right. That is and, true. And, um, but I'm saying like normal everyday thing, Oh that, no no! If if if, if, no. if it's a new it recipe, yeah. no, I'm I'm looking it up online. As a matter of fact, uh, you know I, uh, you know I have an instant pot now. You know he's got an instant pot. He's got an air fryer where he fries uh, yeah. air. I, 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 I fry some of the best air you ever had. <laughs> uh, but the instant pot, uh, you know, I look for instant bacon. You can go find one in the Better Homes and Garden cookbook from 1973. Nope. Uh, but you can find some pretty good instant pot recipes online. And so, no, no. Any new recipes, yeah. But, no, there's some old favorites that I still have cookbooks for. And you can get a tutorial on YouTube on just about, about anything. anything you want. Okay, so here's the thing. Like, my air filter in my son's car. Okay, okay. Okay, you, you, the you. cabin air filter and then the, the regular air filter. When did the, that become a thing? The cabin, 2000. I, okay. Because I researched it. Okay. Because uh, I, I asked the on same the thing. On the internet. I researched it on the internet. <laughs> where before I would have had to go to a mechanic and go, what's the deal with this? Yeah. But, the, but the cabin air filter and then the regular air filter, what the dealerships were going to try to charge me for that. I was like, well, <laughs> no. And so I found out, uh, you know what? I can buy both of these filters for, I'm, I'm out maybe 30 bucks. 
and then opening the hood and replacing these things and for the cabin air filter for th- this particular vehicle you open the glove box and it's there you right. just pull a little thing down and they're going to charge me a 130 dollars to change those no the vehicle only goes to the dealership if it's under warranty yeah uh or or if it's recall <laughs> stuff that's it if man. it's recall you do because they will break it off in you at the dealership yeah oh they try to they sure do <laughs> uh they, they were trying to tell me stuff that i needed to do at thirty thousand miles and i was like okay champ you yeah. know uh because i know better uh I, I don't need to have like if if my fuel injector cleaners need to be cleaned at uh, thirty thousand miles then this is a garbage vehicle. i've got i've got so. a guy that's my mechanic he's a friend of mine he's a good dude but if if he doesn't tell me i need it you we ain't it. getting it you ain't you, you don't need it <laughs> uh but you know the but but the one thing that i'll tell you pre-internet that's different now than anything else i think is television because yeah and well it started to change with cable but boy now yeah. when you can literally pull up because even with cable it was it was it wasn't getting recorded it was it, you still had to show up for appointment television okay it was still uh, kind of like we're going to air it at this time you have your rear end in a seat so you can watch it then speaking of that <clears throat> for years yeah i had i had caught heavy metal on HBO and recorded it. Yeah. And do you know for years I had people coming up to me because heavy metal was tied up in those lawsuits oh, between for the, music the soundtrack yeah. and and the and the actual film. Uh, they were tied up in lawsuits so they couldn't put it out on video. <laughs> and you they would have midnight showings of it at the theater. And people would go. Yeah. Uh, but for years, people were like, man, I heard you got a copy of Heavy Metal. Can I get a copy of that? <laughs> yeah, I guess, Yeah, man, I guess. Yeah. Sure. No. Uh, but Can I borrow that? No. No, you can't have the original. <laughs> no, because you remember how VCR, somebody's VCR, you'd loan oh, somebody a tape, you'd come yeah. back, and it'd be all, all wiggly lines. Mm, you yeah. didn't, you, people didn't clean their VCR heads, that's right. and that's what happened. But uh, no, but... It, you talk about movies and stuff like that. Now, you know, it's like I don't even have a deal with my local cable company anymore. Did you get rid of it? I got rid of it because there's another service that's a, a national brand. I'm not going to do it here. But our local cable company, and I'd like to be able to use them, but I think their product is just not as good as something I can get as a streaming service. And I wouldn't even have that if they didn't have our local channels on it. Yeah. You know. Because when the weather comes down, folks, we live in the south. We live in Tornado Alley. And when it starts to go down, I want to be able to turn it on. And there right. it is. So I talked to my aunt yesterday. Um, called her. She lives in Nashville, Tennessee. Did you know they had a bunch of tornadoes over there this week? Yeah. I did not. Yeah. Because I don't watch the news. Yeah. <laughs> so I had, she was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm there's stuff all over my yard and tornadoes. I'm like, what? Wait, what? whoa, Wait, tornadoes. What? what? Tornado what? Yeah, I had no idea. Had no idea. Uh, but, you know, that's that's. It wasn't on thing. YouTube. <laughs> but some positive things about the Internet now, and specifically on Facebook, is uh, I can stay in some form of contact with people that I might not see ever. in years. Ever, again. Who, ever again. And that's kind of cool. It is. That's kind of cool. Um you know, uh, some people have gone crazy and I have to kind of just let them Go fall crazy. by the wayside. But, you know, uh, but there are some, you know, that is like, it's so good to be able to, you know, kind of occasionally, you know, it's not like we're texting every day or anything like that, but just kind of keep up with what they're doing. The other thing is, uh, is uh, being able to, like you said a while ago, look stuff up. You know, right. it's like, well, who's that, you know, where you might not know. You might and that's another thing that our expectations have changed. Right. Where before it's like, well, I don't know about that. You know, if, 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 if I can get to an encyclopedia or a library sometime in the next week or two, you know, I might, if, if I remember, I'll look that up. Right. Where now it's like, well, well I want to know. It up. That. We'll just look it up. Right. I want to know right now. Uh, pictures, pictures from the smartphone. Um, instantaneous yeah i mean you can send it to your whole family at one time Uh, you know as a guy who's also in photography class Mm -hmm. when i was you had a limited amount of shots 
36. 36 on that roll. If you rolled your film right. <laughs> if you rolled your film correctly. <laughs> that's That goes out. That's a shout out to Art Mead. He Art called Mead. me Hatchet Hands Curtis because I couldn't roll film <laughs> worth a crap. Uh, listen, I, okay, so, so Rabbit. Uh, Art Mead was our photography teacher in high school and probably one of my favorite human beings on absolutely. the planet. Absolutely. Uh, just absolute solid dude. Uh, <laughs> it ended up being friends with him. After we got out of high he's school. He's one of my best friends, actually. Yeah, he's he's a super guy. Have you talked to him lately? Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing good. I tell you, he called me the other day I was playing is, disc is, is golf. Is he still here in turn. town? Or is he, no, I, he's still in town. Because he's, he's always talked about, I'm getting out of here and I'm yeah, going to Timbuktu or whatever he, he's you doing. You ain't there. going nowhere, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he called we me. Need I was to get to, we need him on this show is what we need to do. I don't know that the world's ready for that. I don't know if they are. <laughs> I, I'm not saying we stream it live. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. Yeah, I'm saying we need button, him on the show. Edit button. No, he called me. I was playing. I was in a disc golf tournament, and I had to cut him short. I said, "Hey, man, I'm in a tournament, but I'll call you back." And that was Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Today's Tuesday. I still yeah. hadn't called him back. Still hadn't called him back. Right. Um, but uh, you know, but things have definitely changed. And you know, it's a mixed bag. You know, it is. There, it's good, good and bad. bad. Uh, I, th- I, I think our attention spans have shortened dramatically. Uh, since then, well, that's I like think, this you know. this thing right here. You, I, I don't. This is always on me. Yeah. Um, for family reasons. Yes. Uh, but also, you walk into a doctor's office and you got to wait. I'm playing a game on this phone of some kind. Listen, a mindless. <laughs> The game. last thing you want to grab at a doctor's office is a magazine that right. everybody with it's, a disease right. has has been grabbing a hold of. So right. yeah. Yeah, I, I totally get that. Mr. Curtis, uh, hang on a minute. I'm almost done. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. I got to get Sparky to the next level. But, uh, you know, good and bad, like this podcast. Right. We would not have the wherewithal to buy a radio station. Well, you know. there's probably a couple out there we could buy now. Uh, probably. <laughs> well, you know, uh, a couple probably. Uh but you know this this entry level into this, you know, is substantially down to where we can do this kind of programming, right? And and do this, and even like I said, our little internet radio station, which by the way you can find at retroshow.net, um, <laughs> you know that that replays all our episodes and everything. So, um, you know, there, there's it's it's been a mixed bag of things that are good, things that are not <clears throat> great that have come with it. I, I, I think on the, the downside, man, I hate to be a kid now. So I, I, I think I've got a challenge for our listeners. Um, we, we really want some interaction from you folks. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you going to, if you want to respond, tell us something good that the internet's done for you in your life. Mm-hmm. And then something you just despise. Despise, yeah. <laughs> that it's uh, done. And um, we'll go from yeah, there. Uh, you can do it on our Facebook page, which yep. uh, you can get to from uh, where at? Retroshow.net. By the way, Chris, we haven't told them about the phone number in oh, quite a while. 501-697-9933. Got to get the up button. You find that up button, guys, and you got us. Yeah, and you can call, uh, leave a voicemail. You can text to that number. As Ooh. well, uh, it's modern can, technology. It is modern technology, and I haven't mentioned the emails in a while. Did you know Chris and I have email addresses, uh, and you can get to both of us uh, at either at Chris at RetroShow dot net or at Butch at RetroShow dot net. You can also to get to both of us, just send it to Howdy, Howdy at RetroShow dot net, <laughs> and it hit both of us there. So that's awesome. So there's that. Uh, but a Facebook page, obviously, folks. Listen, uh, we certainly appreciate. Every single one of you people uh, that tune in each week. Here Absolutely. Uh, this is this has been fun. It's uh, a labor of love for us. We just is. enjoy doing it. And we're not, we are by no means getting wealthy. No. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't happening, uh, Jack. But it's it, fun and it's I enjoy fun. it. It's fun. Uh, I look for, I, I actually, you can ask him. I'll start calling him on either Sunday evening or Monday yeah. morning. Uh, what are we talking about? Are, are we, we recording this week? What are we doing? Let's go. Come on. Sometimes, like today, you find out on Tuesday mornings. Right. Uh, right. This I is a Tuesday. Get a, when I get we're a text this. and it says, This is what we're talking about. And da 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 da. And you're going to be live and you can't do all your normal annex. And I'm like, 
<laughs> well, yes, I can. <laughs> I'm not going to, but I could. But I could. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. Uh, folks, listen, uh, we certainly absolutely, uh, like I said, appreciate every single one of you. Uh, we plan on doing this video thing now, so we'll be streaming live each week and recording the shows. So uh, if you can take looking at us, we'll keep doing it. Oh, good Lord. Listen, folks, love all of you. Like a couple of you. Go out and make your day. AMF, guys. <laughs>